I tell you that I am very much aware that Blacks and Black millennials in particular are negatively impacted by these irresponsible credit bureaus. I have stories that I tell in the way that I talk about my interest and my concern in assisting millennials. And the first thing I talk about is I have experienced so many millennials who have done everything that we have told them, their parents have told them to do. They've gone to school, they've gotten degrees, uh, they've prepared themselves for careers, et cetera, only to get out here and find it's not that easy. Uh, and that they're not earning the money that they thought they would be earning based on everything that they have done. And if you don't earn the money uh, that you thought you should earn or you have enough, to number one, uh, make sure that that loan is paid off from that school loan, that student loan is paid off, or that you can pay the monthly payments on it, uh, that maybe you can have transportation and purchase a car. You can rent your own place and get out of your mama's house or not have to stay with four other friends in some two bedroom apartment. And so this is real. And even though we have millennials in the gig economy that's working two and three and four jobs, when you get up against a credit bureau that's going to prevent you from getting credit and you can't do any of these things to have a base and decent quality of life, then your elected officials should be concerned about this and we should be fighting to change this story. So we like to engage these types of issues in, in very digestible ways. So if you had to pick a song to represent this situation, what's that song and why? Oh my God, what, what would that song be? Um, let me see. Um, if I could think of a song. Oh, 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 this is old and you may, not, you may be too young. Uh, to remember this. This is a song by Billie Holiday. And this is a song that talks about, um, no, I don't, I won't take that one. I'm trying to think of a song that said, mama may have, papa may have, but God bless, God the, bless child. the child. Is <laughs> have you heard that? <laughs> yes. Okay, then I think that's uh, applicable because what it's saying is your mom and dad have put you through school, they supported you, and uh, you know now it's time for you to be on your own and God bless the child that has its own. Whose song is that? <laughs> <laughs> Billy Holiday definitely sang it. Um, so many okay. people recorded that song. Oh, oh, good. Okay. But an interesting choice because it was also the theme song for that 90s show Rock that had a lot of these type of situations. I'm sorry, so repeat. There was also the theme song for the 90s television show Rock that also deployed oh, a lot of these Oh, is that right? I didn't know that. Okay. All right. Yeah. So I want to know, we're angry. Who are we angry at? Well, I think the first anger is at uh, where the resistance to treating you fair comes. When you run into a situation with like a credit bureau or any place where you are managing your life, when you're not treated right, that's that's where your first anger is directed. Then the next thing is you got to find out how this system works. And if in fact, uh, usually you're talking to the person who maybe is not making the final decision, you say, give me your supervisor, get me your manager. And then, of course, I think that you should be involved with your elected officials to give them your experience and what has happened to you and give them and document everything so that your elected official could get on it and make it right. So you wrote you wrote a few letters and put a deadline of August 16th. Uh, do you expect to receive your full detailed responses? Yes, I do. What I absolutely do expect to receive it. What would be your next course of action if you don't receive anything? We have any number of things we can do. We can call them in here for a public hearing, uh, number one, and we can go over everything that we have learned about them. Uh, we can work with the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, who also has some authority uh, to issue some new rules, et cetera. We can work with the banks that they deal with uh, to talk about, you know that you've been getting you know, bad credit scores and you've been turning people down. 
what are you going to do about it? And we can think of something in the bill that forces them to have to deal with the issue because we want to get from them as much information as we can. But in the final analysis, even though it gets very difficult and very complicated, there's some people who need to be put out of business or being charged with criminal activity. And so while we are looking at now how we're identifying those individuals who have been harmed and how we are making it whole and making it right for them and maybe getting a moratorium on Equifax being able to continue until it's all cleaned up. We have to look at real final tough accountability and that's where we're going. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate that you asked both the banks and Equifax, what government agencies did you notify, if any? Is there an obligation for them to notify government agencies or was that an ethics question? No, it is uh, uh, the, the, the uh, fact that Equifax has not been transparent and did not notify us. I believe that there is uh, something in law to deal with that. I don't know what it is at this point. My staff may know, uh, but I do believe that they have a responsibility uh, to give the information about, you know, when something like this has happened, when they've been hacked, uh, you know, when when they have had something that interfered with their ability uh, to uh, uh, do what they're supposed to do based on what the way that they're organized, uh, they should let us know. They should reveal it. So we we will we will be looking at that also. Okay, I want to go back to earlier. You mentioned requesting a moratorium. Uh, what's the likeliness that Equifax is permanently barred given the number of consumer infractions on their part? Well, that would be really great uh, in order to re have real accountability. Of course, it takes a lot of work when you go after one of these corporations. Uh, but, you know, as you have mentioned it, that's in the back of my mind. Uh, what can you do? I know that it is a very, very complicated deal to shut them down, but that's in the back of my head. One thing you've been emphasizing is your plan to utilize all the tools available to you to ensure supportive measures for consumers harmed by what you call our broken consumer credit reporting system. What tools are available to you? Well, uh, the tools that are available to a legislator is number one, is to call them in, uh, do your oversight. And the oversight could be a combination of the public hearings. Oversight should be a combination of the letters that we send like to the uh, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau to take a look and use their powers to help us do what we wanna do. Uh, it is um, the power uh, not only to um, write letters, uh, we may need to write letters not only to the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, but maybe to some other agencies of government that have a piece of this action. Uh, so we have some ways by which we can help the law. The, the basic responsibility that we have is to create law, not only to fix things, uh, but to make sure that consumers are being treated fairly. Uh, when I came into uh, this, uh, this office, uh, on the on the financial services committee, and before we had the Dodd Frank reforms, consumers were just being ignored. Nothing was happening. We created the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, and as the chair of the financial services committee, I've given it top priority because far too long the financial institutions had too much power inside this uh, Congress of the United States. I have made a lot of changes so that they don't feel as comfortable anymore. And I've created also a, a subcommittee on diversity and inclusion to make sure that we deal with discrimination and racism in the way that things are handled. And so we're looking very carefully uh, as we have looked at you know, one of our banks who was not doing refinancing in this pandemic that we had, a lot of people were refinancing their loans. And we looked and we saw 50% of those people of, of color uh, that were, were asking for refis were not getting them. And so we're calling them in. We're taking a look at that. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, they have absolutely violated the law. And we'll deal with whatever the law says 
should happen to them for not having um, acted in a responsible uh, way and not discriminating. How can consumers support your efforts and ensure matters are being appropriately and effectively handled? I think consumers really must be more involved in resisting uh, discrimination and inequality and not let it go that you're too busy or you're too embarrassed or you don't really know how to do it. The first thing I say is speak up. You would be surprised oftentimes in speaking up how you will be responded to and how this will put them on notice that they're not to do the next person this way by catching them in a lie or in fraudulent activity. Speak up, don't just go away, that's number one. Number two, contact uh, the elected officials and let them know what happened to you. Put it in writing, uh, email it so that elected officials can take that experience and use it uh, and put it into legislation to correct something. And then if you have the opportunity to talk uh, with media about it, whether it is a talk show, or whether you're on television, a radio program, Blavity, what have you, talk about it. And then other people will get talking about it. And then everybody calling the elected official and saying, this happened to me too. I think these are ways. So don't uh, just you know tell a friend how angry you are about something that happened. Get it to your elected official and talk about it and, and let other people know uh, that this is happening not only to you, but ask him, is it happening to you also? And join a little group uh, to say, we're gonna work with our elected official on this and we're going to be available for testimony if they call us, et cetera, et cetera. So I know we, we've been talking primarily about Equifax because that's the current issue at hand, but should we be trusting these other agencies? I beg your pardon, repeat. Should we trust these other credit agencies? I no, know <laughs> no, absolutely not. Uh, not that I'm saying they're all doing the same thing, uh, but we know that the first thing that we know and we learned was they mix up names. And uh, they, they, in mixing up names, they have you, you know, uh, identified as someone you're not, uh, and they're de decreasing your credit score because you're this, uh, supposedly this other person. And so, uh, Absolutely, don't trust any of them. Uh, question them, push back uh, when they give you your first credit scores if you don't think they're right. And then of course, call your elected official if you think that you've been harmed. Okay, so I'm gonna ask you something that you know has been very true to your nature throughout your career, but I would love to hear you directly um, aimed at millennials. So why do you prioritize the black consumer in your efforts? I make sure that I have a database of black media so that we can talk with black media, we can send press releases, uh, we can feed stories to them, uh, we can invite them to events, et cetera, et cetera. That's extremely important. If you wanna talk to black people, you can't always talk to them through the white media. You've got to go to the media that talks to them and interacts with them. And we think that's very important. I think that I'm always after my staff about doing a better job of it. I wanna know everybody in the black media so that we can send press releases to, uh, that we can ask them to participate in something. And so uh, I pay a lot of attention uh, to blacks consumers, because Black consumers have been ripped off historically. Uh, the most vulnerable of people are charged the highest prices in many of the stores, and uh, uh, they have not given, you know, uh, the attention, uh, the credit scores are, are, are that are given are bad, or just plain mistreatment uh, of uh, consumers in the way that they treat them as opposed to others. And so I pay a lot of attention to that. So what other issues are you tackling that directly affect Black millennials and Gen Z? Well, let me just tell you, today is a big day in the Congress of the United States of America because we have been dealing for months on a program, a piece of legislation called Build Back Better. 
comprehensive piece of legislation that's got in it everything from dealing with climate change uh, to forcing corporations to pay their fair share of taxes, uh, decreasing the cost of Medicare, and opening up the opportunity to negotiate with the pharmaceuticals in order to reduce the cost of uh, these of medicine, et cetera. So it's huge, it's big. And I am the chair of the Financial Services Committee. Now, we've been negotiating this for months now. And in the Build Back Better bill, that is the basis for negotiating all of this, I had $150 billion in there for housing. What was that all about? It was to repair public housing that's unsafe, public housing uh, where the elevators don't work, uh, where there's not heat in the wintertime, there's not air conditioning in the summertime, uh, money for that, money for Section 8, um, so that those people who cannot afford their rent, they're subsidized with the Section 8 vouchers. They're standing in line in the Black community. I had money in there for that. I had money in that for the National Housing Trust Fund to build more af affordable houses and more units. I had uh, money in there for fair housing to deal with discrimination and to deal with unfair evictions, all of that in that bill. That bill was held up by two Democrats on the Senate side, Cinema out of Arizona and Manchin out of West Virginia. They literally had that kind of power because we are so closely cut even in the uh, the uh, Senate of the United States where the bill went to. We got it out of here, sent it over to the Senate, and we were held up by them who would not support it under any circumstances. And we ended up at the last minute where the negotiations got us to getting maybe a third of what we wanted in the overall bill. But in it, all of the housing was stripped out. All of it was stripped out that $150 billion to do all of those things that I've just alluded to will not get done unless until we win in these November elections and we change the balance of power here in the Congress of the United States, especially in the Senate. And so uh, that is a big issue with me, homelessness and the need for housing, the need for affordable housing is a big issue that I put a lot of time and effort in. Definitely appreciate you sharing that. And so that was my last question for you, but I'll welcome now if there's anything that you really want our audience to know. Well, uh, yes, thank you very much for paying attention to this issue. It's very important uh, to the ability to have a decent quality of life as we deal with credit scores. Those credit scores can determine whether or not you build wealth, and whether or not you have wealth to pass on or wealth to invest in businesses or whatever uh, you need the credit for. Uh, and so this is very, very important. And I thank you for paying attention to it. And I want others who are listening to you to get engaged. I want them to call. I want them to document their stories, get them to their member of Congress and ask them to work on it. If they don't hear from their member of Congress, then call me and let me know so that I can see what we can do, even though it may be outside of my district. Uh, this is very important. Great, thank you so much for taking time to talk to us about this and let us know if there's anything else we can do to amplify this. Well, thank you for sharing your experience. It is obvious from talking with you that you have gone through uh, an experience uh, with a credit bureau. I don't know which one it was and that you understand uh, that it can be very harmful, uh, that you got to fight with them, and that uh, we in Congress need to do more to rein them in. Thank you. Appreciate you so much. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.